Hello again, aspiring homeowners. Welcome back to the first time home buyer guide video series. I'm Matt, and we're here to equip you with the knowledge that you need to confidently navigate that path to home ownership. Now, in this episode, this is part two, we are going to discuss that critical aspect of credit. You know, your credit score and your credit history have a significant impact into the loan eligibilities and the terms that you could receive. So let's get started and, and discuss how this critical aspect of credit can affect your home buying journey. But let's start with where does all this credit data or information come from? Now you may have heard these names before, but there are three main credit bureaus in the United States. There's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So as a mortgage lender, what they're gonna do is we're gonna pull what they call a tri-merge credit report, where we pull a score from all three of these at once on one report. Now there is some misunderstandings that we take some type of average or add all these scores together, maybe use some an average score for that. What we actually do is we take the median score. So we drop the highest score and we drop the lowest score and we use the middle score or median score for all our underwriting purposes and for our lending guidelines. So where do the credit bureaus get their data from? They get it from the creditors, people that you have credit with. One of the things that they do is they send that payment data or that balance data to the credit bureaus. They may send it to all three, they may only send it to two or maybe only to one. Typically, creditors will only report their information to the credit bureaus about once every 30 days. It's typically on the cycle date or the, your statement date is the day, same day that they're gonna send that information. Okay, let's talk about some best practices here. What are some things that I could do to maybe make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself the best chance to have the best credit profile when that lender does go and pull my credit report? Well, the first piece I'm gonna really share with you is start early. Go and talk to a lender at least 60 to 90 days before you feel like you're ready to go and make that offer on a home. Now, the reason why we suggest that is that gives the lender time to review everything. There might be some small suggestions that we can make that could have a, a small or maybe even a significant impact to where your credit scores are. Just having little variables of about 20 point improvements could have a, a, a significant impact to what interest rate or maybe even what loan program you might be able to qualify for. One of the ideas is keeping your revolving balances at 30% or less. Now a revolving balance is like a credit card. So if you have a credit card that has, let's say a $10,000 balance on it or limit, and you have a $3,000 balance, then you're at about 30% usage on that credit limit. That's kind of the sweet spot. If it goes over that, say you go to seven or eight or $9,000, that's actually gonna take your score in another direction. The other part that we really suggest is do not take on any new debt during before or during or just before closing on this transaction. No new debt, no new inquiries. Don't go buy cars, do not go to the furniture store. Be cognitive. Now another situation that we kind of go through is maybe somebody who doesn't have a lot of credit or maybe they have no credit. How do you build credit? And it's hard to build credit if you don't have any credit. So if you've never had a credit card before, you haven't really used credit before, if you go and just start applying for what they call an unsecured credit card where you're just asking them to trust you without any previous history that they can see on the credit reports, most likely they're not gonna give you an approval. So there is something called a secure credit card. A great place to start is maybe where you bank at. Go and talk to your banker or where you have a checking account and savings account and see if this is a, a product that they offer as a secure credit card. And another piece that you can do is if you have a family member or a significant other that may be willing to put you on as an authorized user on one of their accounts. Now that may take about 30 to 45 days to cycle into your credit report, uh, but then what you're able to do is kind of latch on to their credit history and pull that over to your side. And that might be another way to establish some more trade lines and start helping you build some credit. Now, something else that you can do is you can look at the accuracy of the information that is on your credit report with your lender. They can let you know what's, what details are on there. And if there's information that is incorrect, you can start a dispute process with each one of those credit bureaus. Now, it, may, it takes about 30 days to even go through that process because you're gonna submit a dispute and they're gonna contact that creditor. That creditor has 30 days to respond to that dispute. But if there's information that's not right, then the, per the Fair Credit Reporting Act, they have to update that or remove that information. So the dispute process may be initial way to kind of get that going. Now, knowing more about what credit reports are 
you know, how they impact you, what information is provided there. Go and do some research. You know, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax have all their own websites with a plethora of information. Okay, that wraps up part two on credit and how that can impact into that loan approval. Now there's two more steps that we want to make sure that we go through in this next section, part three, we're going to cover income. Now income may sound like, you know, there's just some basic generic pieces that have to come through there, but lenders have their own guidelines on how they're going to view that. And it really comes down to a will, an ability to repay a loan. Your credit is a willingness to repay a loan and your income is an ability to repay your loan. So we wanna make sure that we have a good aspect of how that might apply to your situation and see what other questions you may have.